Thousands of Hindu religious people come to visit the sacred Kailash Parvat and Mansarobar Lake. Situated in the China's autonomous region of Tibet every year from around the globe and neighboring country India via Nepal. Our team, accompanied by Indo-British diasporas, Hindus are resting since reaching Mitteri Bridge on their way ahead after crossing the Dolalgat Bridge via the Arniko Highway and viewing the sceneries around the Sunkoshi and Botekoshi River Bank after having their breakfast. A Nepali guide crossed the border, all the pilgrims accompanying the entourage. We reached Jangmu, showing their papers at the Tibet Immigration Office, are travelling ahead, watching the glittering scenes of Jangmu town, the first town of Tibet known as Khasa by the Nepalese. On the way to Nyalam from Jangmu, the landscapes, hill, hillocks, wood, steep terrains attract the visitors. The place Nyalam is 3,750 meters high above sea level. This is the second city on our Kailash tour. The inhabitants here are all of Tibetan origin. The Indo-British visitors traveling with us are observing the town after reaching and keeping their luggage in the hotel. Due to reaching Nyalam on a single day from Kathmandu, the whole night is spent here. The visitors traveling with us are seen resting and enjoying after taking vegetarian food. The cooking staffs traveling with us are seen to prove their expert knowledge with our guests enjoying the culinary food. Tasty, delicious varieties of parotta, flat breads, pickle and a sip of hot tea is quite soothing here. On the next day, the practice of travelling three to four hours uphill around Nyalam, sightseeing and coming down are done in order to prevent acute mountain sickness. Our team is seen travelling up and waving hands with pleasure, sitting on the stone. While climbing up to Nyalam, the scenes of fluttering colorful flags and festoons hung there for peace are seen. Visitors traveling up seem to be enjoying alongside the hill, hillocks, glittering Himalayas and silvery brooks and brooklets. These Gujarati pilgrims are dancing, singing and enjoying representing their own Gujarati culture. Singing and dancing are the characteristics of the pilgrims. And on this type of journey, the hymns are sung for wishing world peace and the like. By doing this much, the probability of having altitude sickness is almost prevented. The Nyalam town is seen down from here. How beautiful are the scenes above the Nyalam town?
Truly, the breathtaking scenes of the Himalayas do quench their thirst while walking up and down the steep trails. Pilgrims are preparing to go to Sangha from Nyalam and some are even seen boarding a jeep. While travelling to Sangha in Lalung La Pass, 5050 meters, one can see the white Himalayas and the desert like nude hillocks below. Here, there's a great gate standing in welcome to all the tourist pilgrims with colourful flags. From here, Gauri Shankar, 7135 meters, Srisha Pangma, 8035 meters, mountains are clearly visible. We got an opportunity to see the panoramic view of Pekutsu and Salt Lakes before reaching today's destination Sangha. The pious river Brahmaputra has been flowing from the melting glaciers of Kailash Parvat and via different parts of Tibet and Lhasa. It ends converging in the Ganges. This city is Sangha. This is a town facilitated with telephone, electricity and hotels. We then started to Piryang from Sangha. All the pilgrims reach Piryang after six hours. In Priyang, a little bit different type of Tibetan settlement than that of Nyalam and Sangha is seen. This place lies in between Sangha and Mansarovar Lake. We travel for four hours where the lake is now seen. Today we reached Mansarovar Lake, 4580 meters which is also known as Brahma's Lake or Mapam Yum Tso in Tibetan language. Lake Mansarobar. The word Manas means mind or consciousness. The name Mansarobar means lake of consciousness and enlightenment. Lying at the height of 4580 meters, Mansarobar has held deep spiritual influence and wide religious significance among Hindus and Buddhists. Making a round of the Mansarovar lake and taking a dip in it, it is believed to purge one's soul from sins and the body from sickness. Others say by taking a dip in the lake, one can retain youth and vitality. Still, there are others who believe that one cannot only clean his soul but also secure this place in heaven after the end of the mortal life. One more school of thought believes that by taking a dip in it helps one attain moksha, free from the cycle of birth and rebirth in worldly life. The lake is the most sacred among Hindus. It is also a must-visit place for Hindus due to its sacredness. And Hindu scriptures reveal that the Hindu must visit this place once in a lifetime. We stayed at the place too. This Mansarovar lake is so big that the Tibetan people here say that it takes three days to visit its peripheries. The cascading waves of the lake in the wind look very charming. The travelling distance to Mansarovar Lake is about 15 miles. The Mansarovar lies 36 miles away to the south of Kailash. The storage of waters, Mansarovar Lake from its east, the Brahmaputra River has been initiated. 
Vansarovar, also called as the giant lake sometimes, the Satlas River also has been flowing via the western part of this lake. It is believed that all the pilgrims who stay at the Mansarobar lake can witness Lord Shiva and his consort Parvati taking bath in this holy lake every night from 2 to 4 a.m., especially during full moon nights. The leader of this team, Mrs. Hansa Patel, including the other pilgrims are seen taking holy bath here and some have already finished bathing. According to the description of the Ramayana, one who takes bath in Mansarovar lake reaches Brahma Lok, heaven, whereas the one drinking the water from the Kailas knows the world of Shiva Lok, Shiva's abode. Also, the pilgrims, according to Hindu religion, are seen offering water, flowers, money to the god and splashing water among each other with much joy and enthusiasm. <laughs> Nepali team leader Rajkumar Neupane is also seen running, taking bath in cold waters as a staunch Hindu. All the pilgrims are seen meditating in Lord Shiva and reciting the names of their ancestral gods, performing homes, offering grains mixed with butter to the fire in the name of gods in order to relieve themselves from any kind of sins which they might have committed knowingly or unknowingly. Everybody is doing arati, oil-fed lamps and praying by joining hands. After completing homes, they are exchanging happiness by cuddling each other, much to the amusement of the onlookers. Cooking job for these Hindu pilgrims is done by our Nepali cooks, but today the team leader Mrs. Hamsa Patel and all of her friends are seen busy cooking by themselves. Encircling the Chugompa, located at the banks of Mansarovar Lake, winding the prayer wheel and taking darshan, audience, Pilgrims are about to travel to Darchen. The appearing scene of Mount Gurla Mandata and Mount Kailash from Mansarovar Lake also attracts a lot of visitors. Rakshasthal is named after the flesh-eating demons of Hindu mythology, believed to lurk beneath its dark waters. A representation of dark, malevolent forces this lake is generally shunned by pilgrims. According to a legend, the water of this lake was poisonous. The condition changed when a goldfish from Mansarovar Lake tunneled through a narrow channel to let sacred water flow into Rakshasthal, thus neutralizing the poison. Rakshasthal is the lake where Ravana is said to have done penance to invoke Lord Shiva. Locals say that the water from this lake should never be drunk. It is located west of Mansarovar Lake. We reached Darchen traveling by jeep. Today we are staying here at Darchen. On the next day we are planning to go on a circuit tour. Kailash Yatra begins from here and it takes three days. Darchen is situated at 4,600 meters high above sea level and there are eight to ten hotels with a small market which is known as the Kailash base camp as well. Travelling for 30 minutes from Darchen by jeep, Darboche is reached. The foot trek starts from here to Kailash and according to Hindu religion, 
This place is known as Yamadwar, Gate of the God of Death. Travelers who cannot do the Kailas round worship and circle Yamadwar and return from the journey can remain satisfied with the feeling that they have visited this place. A great mass of black rock soaring to over 6,714 meters, Mount Kailash has the unique distinction of being the world's most venerated holy place, at the same time that it is least visited. The supremely sacred site of our four religions and billions of people, Kailash is seen by no more than few thousand pilgrims each year. Before the dawn of Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism, the cosmologies speak of Kailash as the mythical Mount Meru, the center and birthplace of the entire world. The mountain was already legendary before the great Hindu epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata were written. Kailash is so deeply embedded in the myths of ancient Asia that it was perhaps a sacred place of another era another civilization now long gone and forgotten. For many travelers and pilgrims, Tibet has a special appeal. This is particularly true of the remote southwestern corner, where the great curve of the Himalayas swings northwards, tilting the Tibetan plateau towards the heavens. Going around Mount Kailash 108 times means that one is directly receiving Nirvana, After travelling for three to four hours from Darboche on foot, Dera Pook is reached. Weak travellers ride on horses as well. The Shivaji and Parvati is seen adjacently, giving a feeling that one is now in heaven. <laughs> this is the view of Dormala Pass, also known as Dolmala Pass. It is 5,636 oh, meters high above the sea level and the highest part of the journey. This altitude could cause headaches and vomiting. But one feels better when one descends to the lower elevation. After walking for 10 to 15 minutes from Dormala or Dolmala Pass on foot, Gaurikunda is reached, which according to one legend, Lord Shiva is believed to have taken bath together with his consort Parvati. Now we have reached Jutulpuk, where we are staying overnight for the second day. After walking for two to three hours from here, we reach Chongdo, which is the receiving point, where the jeeps are waiting for us. This is our last day of the journey. After reaching here, the three-day foot trek gets completed. There is a tradition that the pilgrims bound for Astapad go to Astapad by jeep and observe the Kailash and Nandi mountain. The pilgrims can also start their journey on a Nandi tour from Darchen itself via Astapad. Astapad is another holy place near Mount Kailash. It lies in front of the Nandi mountain. Astapad means mountains of eight steps and many saints, rishis, monks have used caves at Astapad for meditation. Even Jain Muni Rishabdev meditated on this mountain. Nandi mountain is situated south of Kailash. One can reach Nandi mountain by walking on the shores of the river. 
which flows through Darchen and originates from Mount Kailash. To complete Nandi Parikrama, you need about two to three days. Tirthapuri is situated 70 kilometers west of Mount Kailash. Tirthapuri is considered the third most holy pilgrimage site on West Tibet. An important finale to a Kailash Kora, it is an area strongly associated with Padmasambhava, as well as events from the lives of numerous Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Within the temple is a cave where Padmasambhava meditated. Tirthapuri is situated on the right banks of the Satluj River. The circumambulation of Tirthapuri takes about one hour. Both Hindus and Buddhists make obligatory stops here and the pilgrimage to Mount Kailash is considered unfinished if this site is not visited. No scientific research on Tibet's Kailash Parvat has been done so far. Extending from Karakoram to the west and Brahmaputra to the east, this pious mountain lies on the northern side beyond the Himalayan region. 6,714 meters has been charmed by its entangled anecdotes. Regarded as the heavenly abode of Lord Shiva, this place looks very majestic in a clear weather. Saiba, Hindus, Buddhists, Jains and Bonpos, religions respect this peak equally and they have interpreted the mountain in their own pious ways and have explained it differently according to their own customs and traditions. Kailash Mansovar Yatra It's very very tough but it's a lifetime experience. I would advise people to do it. You will experience yourself. And I felt something from my heart that this is something that you have done in your life. I'm here with a group, Indian British Kailash Mansar Yatra 2010. I'm enjoying very, very much with the group. And uh, I'm here for second time. I enjoy this time more than last time. This is the first time I have came here. I have heard so much thing about Kailas, but it didn't bring me so much closer. After seeing myself, it, my thinking has been changed. It's make me feel so close to the religion. Another thing is, my main aim is to be here. I like to uh, make people dream comes true. The best thing has happened to me in this, uh, this trip, 17 of us all made the parikrama and that is my main goal, is make me feel I won the whole world. We travel to Mansarabar Lake where the night is spent. The sunrise and sunset here really look wonderful. After Mansarabar Lake's journey, we travel to Kathmandu via Pyongyang. Sangha, Nyalam and Jangmu. The journey to Kailash and Mansarobar Lake slowly comes to an end. All the arrangements of this tour were done by the Monte Rosa Treks and Expedition situated in Kathmandu, Nepal. In the days ahead, the Monte Rosa Treks and Expedition will continue to serve our guests who are interested in mountain climbing, trekking and going on a journey to Mansarovar and Mount Kailash, including other tourist activities in Nepal. We wish good luck to all our clients and hope that they will visit Nepal time and again, giving us a chance to serve them on their many trips to Nepal. We all are very glad that we got the great opportunity to serve you. We are sure that the visit to Mansarovar and Mount Kailash will be very memorable to you like it is to us in the days to come.